Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Maryland Apex Accelerator webinar. We're delighted that you could join us today. I'm your host, Yasmin Razak, and I'm the Marketing and Training Coordinator. Today, the webinar topic is something that I know a lot of you are very interested in. It's called How to Find and Bid on $25,000 or Less Contracts. And it is led by Akisha Foster, who is the founder of Key to Life Professional Services, LLC, and is, of course, a former Apex Accelerator counselor. We will get started very shortly. There will be opportunities for you to ask Akisha your questions, and you can do that by typing them in the chat box on your screen. We will pause midway through the presentation for a five minute break. We'll try to get through as many of your questions as possible. So please do try to stay tuned to the end. As always, a copy of the slides will be emailed to you after the webinar. And I do have to let you know that this webinar is being recorded and we will be available on our website and YouTube channel later today. For those of you who are not familiar with the Maryland Apex Accelerator, it is our mission to help Maryland businesses fully compete in federal, state and local government procurement. Our services are no cost to you. So if you'd like to speak with a counselor, please complete our client application form on our website, marylandapex.org. And if you've been counseled before and just need further help, please email your counselor to request another meeting. Okay, good morning, Akisha. Hope all is well. The floor is yours. And good morning, Yasmin, and all is well. And it's always so good to be back uh, here giving these webinars, giving back to the community, making sure that we continue to build our small businesses. And welcome everyone. Today's webinar, as Yasmin had told you, is, is really trying to help you figure out how to find those simplified acquisition opportunities and those micro purchases. And before we dive into today's topic, I want to take a moment to thank you all for joining this webinar because it's part of a comprehensive series and it's really designed to help small businesses navigate um, the complexities of the government contracting space. And this is for my new small businesses because last month we covered how to read and understand a federal or state local solicitation. Now today we're building on that foundation by focusing on how finding these opportunities, these small contracts, because what I'm focusing on is um, we have to do the crawl, walk, run phase. So that's what this training is designed to do, is to give you those crawl, walk, run. So we taught you how to read it last month. This month, we're teaching you how to find them. And then next month, we're going to introduce you to proposal writing level one. So you see why it's important that you attend each series. And if you didn't attend it, go back and watch uh, the replay. And we have our um, YouTube channel. So that way you can go back and watch those. And so that way, when you find those opportunities, you've already developed the your templates, your, um, your resumes. Everything is prepared for you to respond to these opportunities. Okay, so next, our goal in this is to just give you those tools that you need to stand out, to be successful, to grow your small business. Okay, so next, let's go to the next slide. Okay, so meet your instructor, that's me. I've been in the government space for 22 years, you know, and because this is what I do. I breathe it, I live it, this is what I do. I'm a GovCon coach. I'm a proposal support consultant. You all know I'm a former contracting officer specialist and a former Apex Accelerator counselor. I've been working with you. I know what you need. I know what it takes to win. I've helped my clients win and I'm still in the Army Reserve right now, looking forward to retirement. So that's what I have coming up on the horizon. Okay, so now let's talk about the agenda. All right. So as we said earlier, you're going to get the slides. Make sure you take the slides. You will always get the slides so that way you can take notes. If you 
and, and then put all your notes in there. You're going to have some homework assignments in there, everything in there. I've put everything in there for you. I've added a list of the webinars that we're going to have in the series. We then to the next one is going to be the intro on August 29th. So just stay tuned and look at the um, list that's in the slides when you get them, because we're going to keep everything in there for you. So that way, you always have the tools you need to be successful. Okay, so let's go to the next slide. Okay, so now we're gonna take a quick poll so I can gauge the audience because I wanna make sure I'm not, you know, I wanna go deep, but not too deep that I'm not, I'm losing everybody. So who's very familiar, somewhat familiar, not familiar at all with government contracts? So I can gauge the audits. That's going to really help me to give you good um, clarity. Now, next, also, I believe in taking questions. I'm going to have the end for the questions, but also I do take questions throughout the um, webinar, so that way we can have an engaging, interactive session. So I don't want you to get bored with it all. I want you to stay um, very interactive, so that way we can, before you know it, the session will be over. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead. So right now I'm saying 28% of you are very familiar, somewhat familiar about, oh, half of you. And um, the other 22% is not familiar at all. So that's good to know because that's going to really help to um, have a good conversation. Okay, so today the introduction. Okay, so we're going to be talking about uh, defense industry base, right? The government industry base. That's our new incentive for small businesses coming into space because uh, the Office of Small Business Program took over and now we're falling on that mandate. So now what we're doing is we really have targeted our small businesses and preparing you for these small buys because to me, that's the crawl, walk, run phase, right? So that way you are prepared, you're getting your past performance. Um, you're able to deal with the administrative burden of dealing with government contract. Then we're going to talk about how to, to navigate uh, SAM.gov. That's going to be in our practicum. That's the walkthrough that we're going to talk about. And then how to set up those searches and then move on from there. Okay, so let's keep going. All right, so now because I wanted to talk about, we've taken our poll, now let's dive deep into it. So now the simplified acquisition threshold. This is what we got to understand. Uh, the simplified threshold is under 250,000. So everything under 250,000 is where I'm focusing this training on today. And then the micro purchases. So when you talk about micro purchases, many people like to lump it all together. It's not all together because a micro purchase uh, for supplies and services is different than construction, you know, minor construction or services. So always go back to the FAR to always reference the uh, federal um, acquisition regulation so you can always see what is be because they increased it. So you'll know what, because they increased it to $10,000. It wasn't always $10,000. But like I said, you have to know what it's for. So if you offering um, a service and if the micro purchase threshold for that service says 2500 and you offer that service for uh 3500 they're not going to split purchase right because we're not authorized to split purchase on these different opportunities so that is something you have to know when you're going after these micro purchases and wanting to reach out to these government contracting officers who, I mean, they inundated. So that's why we're telling you how to do it effectively. So that way you're not going after everything and getting nothing. So that's why we're going into the crawl walk phase. So we're only focusing on the RFQ, the request for quote. We're focusing on those sources sought notices because many times we have our small businesses who are reaching out to these agencies 
and they're just sending a capability statement, right? And then you wonder why the contracting officer is not calling you back, not giving you any information because they're like, okay, so what you reaching out to me, you sent me this um, capability statement. Okay, so now what? So you, what, so what, so what's the um, Senate? No, you use the source of sought notices and the request for information on SAM.gov to respond to these agencies that you've identified that you want to work with. So say you want to work with the USDA, you're going to look for source of sought notice and RFIs for USDA. If you want to work with the Department of Treasury, you're looking for Department of Treasury. Whatever agency that you have decided you want to pursue, now you have to develop that relationship with them. You have to take the time out to do all those different things because what's happening is, it's like, I always have to get something, just a little analogy, if you will, about um, developing relationships. Even when you meet in high school, I mean, through elementary, through high school, college, all those things, we've been taught that you have to build relationships with different people and different organizations before they will um, decide to work with you. So it's the same principle when it applies to government contracting. Although we think because it's government contracting, the relationship should just instantaneously happen. That's not the case because it doesn't happen that way when you go to a new employment, a new job. It doesn't happen that way when you become a subcontractor or prime contractor. Those same principles apply. So you have to develop those relationships and you have to know the way to get to these opportunities. And that's through the sources sought notices and a request for information and the simplify acquisition procedure, staying in the SAP and the micro purchases on this, uh, that threshold. So that's what this training is focusing you on. Because once you start winning the small buys, you'll be ready for the big buy. Plus, you've got that little past performance. Then you can speak to it because you've actually walked through the processes of doing your invoicing, um, uh, sending a proposal response. So that's why we start you in the crawl phase. And this is by this is the pre-solicitation phase, right? Because the pre-solicitation phase mean I can talk with the contracting person. Or, But guess what I'm telling you now? They're not going to talk to you because you have 300 people trying to call one person or you have 400. Everyone that got that opportunity notification from Sam is now reaching out to that contracting officer for information. So you have to be very wise how you're using your time, not using your time, calling them, then getting frustrated that they're not answering. No, comp compose a compelling proposal response and tailor your capability statement according to the sources sought notice and the request for information notice. So that way, you know, you're going to get an uh, audience with that person, that contracting professional. Now, then also you have to build that relationship with the small business special specialist because they can advocate for you. But who's going to advocate for someone they never met they don't know, they haven't built a, uh, a rapport with, so they don't know you from Adam if you walked in the door. You understand what I'm saying? So that's the importance of learning the different tools you have to gain access to these individuals. You know, it's so many people preaching, oh, just keep reaching out and calling them, but you got to understand they have a job to do. They have to put out the source of salt notices. They have to put out the RFIs. They have to then get all of the responses back. Oh, by the way, now they have to put it out again for solicitation for people to respond to that and then do the evaluation. So there are so many things that they're doing that, so they're not ignoring you. They're just busy. You see, so that's why when we first impression is the last impression. So our first impression is going to be, look, we did our homework. We've done the market research because, you know, that's what they tell us to do all the time. Do your market research, do your homework, do this. But I'm going to show you how to do that. So that's why we've created these series to educate you and inform you. Now, if you've done it this way and it's not working, then you can really have 
some frustrations or action, but you can't give up. That's the thing about it. You just got to keep going and keep going it because maybe it's not meant for you to work at the Navy yard. Maybe it's meant for you to work at uh, the IRS. You know, they more align with you and um, your values. It's more like of a win-win and not a win-lose. So that's why when you're looking for these different opportunities and you're looking uh, for okay, who should I work with? And how do I identify who I should work with? You need to know those things. So in this in this um, slide, you're going to see at the bottom, I put in the notes, you're going to do some homework. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up a safe search for sources sought notices. And then we're going to set up the um, for the request for information so we can always get the notifications every day. So that's going to be your homework for this one. And then you're going to look on that source of sought notice to find out who is the POC. Who is that POC for that opportunity? And then add that POC on your call sheet. See, this is a series of steps that need to be, have been taken place so that way you can position yourself. See, we want to focus on winning the 25K, but we, we won't, don't want to do the work that it takes to position to get ready to win that opportunity. It just don't happen. It's a, it's a series of steps that puts you in a position to win these opportunities. So that's what it takes. Okay. So then we even added them to the call sheet. Now we, I recommend that you start with one agency at a time. It's just like a relationship. You sitting up here trying to date this person, that person, that person, you're split, you can't do nothing. No, just focus on one agency. And then that agency going to have a bunch of other people that you're going to have to contact. You got to talk to the program manager. You got to talk to the Osdebu. You got to talk to the small business specialist. It's so many people you need to talk with that agency because how about you did all your homework, um, you've identified a couple of opportunities, but that culture doesn't align with you. You didn't got out there and now you're stuck and now you're miserable. You didn't want this contract. You did the work, you did, but you didn't understand the culture didn't fit with you. And then now you're stuck there for a year and a half and you and just miserable. So no, that's why it's important um, to look at all those different things that's important to you because everyone's importance is different. Okay, so that's it for that one. So let's move on. Next, we're gonna talk about the importance of the uh, defense industry base and the government industry base. Okay, so what we're doing here is we've put on these series of events to get you ready for the contract team because it's not time to get ready when you've already reached out to these different agencies offering your services and your products to them. You have to be ready first. So that's why we're having the series of training. And then you have to get a counselor. Talk to your counselor about all those different uh, things you need to talk about. So when you get ready and you are ready to go before uh, the different obstacles, the small business specialists, you, want, you won't be asking those questions that you should have asked previously. And that way, all you're doing is identifying the challenges that the agency is facing, their pain points, and then you write to it. Okay, we can help you with this janitorial services because we offer 24-7. Um, we're in the local area. So if you're in the state of Maryland, uh, we're 52 miles away from Fort Meade, or we're 10 miles away from Fort, because what is that differentiating thing that's going to make you want to, them to do business with you? So we're helping the underserved businesses so that way you can, um, it, and it's more for the promotion of the diversity, inclusion, equity, and then we're guiding you through the entire process. So that way you can be ready. So then you're going to be dealing, so the next, you got to understand that now we have that mandate for the cybersecurity because um, so many small businesses are the vulnerability um, to those large primes or to the government agencies because they haven't got their um, information awareness training. They've uh, clicked on a malicious link and then now uh, the agency is infected and the prime contractor uh, systems are infected. So that's what we're doing now is we're getting you ready 
for these different opportunities that you will be pursuing. So that way you can get a, a great CPARS, that contract performance assessment report that you will get, that's your report card. So that's, you're gonna know if you did good, you didn't do so good, you're gonna know because they're gonna give it to you. So in the notes section, you will see the sources of those new mandates that's out there for us and the business strategy uh, for small businesses. So they've put together this business strategy to help you be successful in the government marketplace. It takes time though, it's patience and time. You have thousands of small businesses reaching out to these counselors and these different APEX organizations who are limited on staff. Although we have these programs, that's why we're giving you this training so you can go out and implement the training and keep moving and um, excelling in your business. Okay, so now understanding the dip and dip readiness, the components of being ready. First of all, you have to be registered in SAM. Now, I know many a times they tell you don't register in SAM, but I'm going to tell you, as a former contracting officer, specialist, subcontractor, you name it, I've done it, um, they, they look you up in SAM. So that's why I always recommend that you be registered in SAM. We have umpteen videos on how to register for SAM because you're going to need to be registered in SAM so you can do the safe searches for this um, practical walkthrough we're going through. If you don't have that, then you can't save the searches and the different things that you're trying to build to automate and make the ease of your business. Next, your certifications. You gotta do the research. You gotta do the research on find out which certifications do you need? Are you a woman-owned small business? Are you a veteran-owned small business? Are you disadvantaged-owned small businesses? And I put that link in the bottom in the notes and it's um, the sba.gov where you learn about your certifications under the federal contracting tab. So you just go to that sba.gov and you will find the federal contracting tab where you will see all the different low, uh, certifications so you can see which one you are eligible for and then the paperwork that you need to do to obtain those certifications because that is all part of you winning these contracts as uh, one of the contract may calls for a subcontractor to have a small business. And that's mostly for the state. So that is mostly for the state. They have the veteran owned small business and then it'd be like 5% for that. And then the subcontracting for different um, offerings. So you have to read the um, notice or the different systems because like, they might ask, well, we're looking for a total small business or they might say, well, we're looking for a hub zone small business or we're looking for a veteran owned small business. So when you don't have any, because I, I believe in starting where you are right now, you don't have any certifications. So then you're looking for all things, total small business, all things, um, partial small business. And you'll see that in the walkthrough because this is the, um, the explanation part of the training. And then when we dive in the practical walkthrough, we'll discuss that more. So if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them. And like I said, everything is in the notes sections when you get the slides at the end of the training, okay? So don't worry if you can't get, take notes fast enough. I put them in the notes section for you. And then the last thing that's in the notes section is the contractor's qualifications. All right, that's FAR part, that's the Federal Acquisition Regulation Part 9. That's where you go to learn what all of the qualifications are. And then I always recommend you copy, you paste, you put it in a Word document, create a little checklist, and then you check one thing off at a time. Because what happens is you'll forget, and then you'll forget where you left off because life happens. You're building a business, you're dealing with your training. You're out here um, meeting with your contracting officers, your PMs, your program managers of these different programs, your small business specialists for this agency. You have to write it down. So that's why it's important to print off, have your checklist, write those things down so you can refer back to it at a different time. The FAR is the Federal Acquisition Regulation. And that's our Bible. 
That's the that's what we use to um, govern how we deal with small businesses, how we write contracts, who we can work with, how we do everything. Okay. Now the self the self assessment. So now we got to do our self assessment. And what I recommend you do on our on our page, the apexaccelerator.org, our research uh, resources page, we have a contract readiness checklist. And that's what we use for our clients because we want to know what your current state is so we can get you to the state of being uh, dib and bid re give ready. That's the defense, you know, that new initiative. Do you have your capability statement? Are you generating revenue in your business? All those different questions on there, because what that's going to do is a self-assessment. It want to make sure we're preparing you for government contracting. And then when you answer those questions, you'll have them before your first counseling session. And that way you can hit the ground running. So these things and these trainings are here to prepare you for when you get to meet with your counselor. Because of the limited staff, it's important that we can buy one to many. So therefore, one person can tell many people versus you waiting on the one to one. So that's why these trainings are so important to prepare you for those sessions. And these uh, trainings are customized for our um for our uh, people that's coming for the counseling sessions. Now, this will give you a solid foundation where you currently are. So say you didn't get your certifications yet. So then, you know, put a check by this. Okay, action item. I need to start working on my certifications. So now I need to see what is available. And then what's next for you? Okay, so now let's get to the selling to the government. Okay, the market research and identifying these opportunities. Now, what I recommended was that you find opportunities that are 25K and less because those ones are, it's not easy to win, it's just easier to win because you still, because you're competitive, right? We still, it's 10 small business trying to apply for that same opportunity and only one of you going to win it. So it's still competitive, but you've cut out a lot of other people who's going after the large buys, who have the past performance, who have all those things and those systems in place already that you're still trying to put in place. So that's why I recommend you go after things like office supplies, like stationery, printers, you know, office furniture. And then why do I say that? Because government agencies frequently need these items and they fall under the micro purchase threshold, right? So if you want to use, say they wanted to use the micro purchase, I mean, the government purchase card and purchase your service. That's a quick win right there. That's a quick win done you've provided them support and you gave them some stationery some printers some stuff but this is the thing when you're dealing with it or any kind of things it the reason why it is very hard is because we are um sometimes mandated to use certain sources like sometimes you have to go use the gsa schedule and then if you're not on a gsa schedule then you're not eligible to bid on those opportunities. So that's important to know because you have so many small businesses trying to bid on an opportunity that they're not eligible to bid on. So that's why it's important to know those things. Then the next thing is uh, once you find out, now you have to always validate that requirement. So I talked about maintenance and repair services like building maintenance, HVAC repairs, janitorial services. You know, you like you offer these services. Now what? You know? So that's why we have to know those different things. And then we talked about professional services, like administrative support, or if you're a program manager or project manager and you have that PMP certification, then you can look for things like that. Now how you find out what these NAICS codes are is through 
I always recommend you go to the NAICS code uh, Census Bureau where you search for your NAICS codes or your PSC codes on that website. Now, but once you identify those NAICS codes, you have to search for current opportunities using those NAICS codes because too many times we'll spend all this time looking at past contracts, but they not even off, they not even purchasing that um that service anymore. So that's why you look for the current opportunities and then you analyze the past contract awards for insights to validate, yes, they're still buying it. Yes, I should go after this. Yes, I, yes, they've bought it 14 times. So yes, this is a good one for me. I should go after it. And now I got to speak to that. And so, and where you will have to go is to get the NAICS. Because like I said, when we walk through the proctor, if you don't know what a NAICS code and PSC code, please check out the training we have on the NAICS and PSC codes. This training is really basically on trying to teach you how to go find the opportunities. And then you're going to have to do a little bit of homework on the NAICS and PSC codes. But I will definitely show you where to get that that information so once you get the keywords and the name that they're calling it because I've noticed this in you know been doing government contracting for so long sometimes they'll say I want janitorial services but then other times they'll say custodial services but you put on your capability statement um janitorial services and so when they did they um control find search it didn't pop up so you see why it's important to know which agency you're going to and what are they calling it this agency? Are they calling it custodial services or are they calling it janitorial services when they do the keyword search? Now, when they do the next code, the next code search, that's different because it'll pop up under that next code. So because I notice a lot of my small business, when they come in and they're doing their searches, they do keywords and they're not using the PSC codes or the next codes. And um, I will show you what those are. And I apologize. I did not put that link in the notes section because I I, I forget that most, a lot of new businesses don't even understand what the NAICS and PSC code. So I apologize for that. So I'll be sure to show you in the practical walkthrough so you can grab that uh, later. And then for minor construction, uh, certain things like floor cleaning or demolition cleaning, uh, uh, the four polishing, or just doing roofings, you only do that portion. And then you offer your services to the prime contractor, you can get in quicker. You see what I'm saying? You can get those opportunities. And that way you can work. So say you do flooring, you can work for two or three other businesses selling your flooring services to them. And they're the one working with the government and you work for them as their subcontractor. So there's so many different ways to go after these different opportunities. But what we're trying to do is make it a manageable scope of work, something very easy, something you can manage, something that is not going to be too cumbersome, or then you just give up. Because I've had a lot of small business come in for the counseling sessions and they just give up because there's so much work involved and it's so much that is involved and going after these opportunities. And so, and it's a lower entry barrier. So the goal for us is to get you in quicker. It's, it's not gonna be quickly, it's just gonna be quicker than trying to go after a complex buy. So that's what the training is for. Uh, the con the um, Is to show you how to get there just a little bit quicker. It's, it's, you can't, there's no shortcuts to gaining um, knowledge and understanding and implementation. There just, there's just not, not is. Now, if you know a shortcut, then please let me know. But you, it's, it's all about, the last thing is building relationships. You have to, many times we're not attending these pre-bid conferences. Um, so you've seen this opportunity out there, you want to bid on it. They say we're going to have a pre-bid conference and then you don't attend. And then that means you have lost the opportunity to talk to the contracting professional. Maybe they might have the PM there. Uh, and then you can ask questions about this opportunity. So that way you can see yes or no, I should bid on this opportunity. Yes, it's something I should uh, pursue. 
this is something I should go after. So that's why I always recommend that is a great way to see about the organization. Just start learning about them as attending those pre-bid conferences. And oh, by the way, you're going to see who else is going after those opportunities, other prime contractors, other subcontractors, or other people looking for other small businesses looking for teaming partners. And then y'all happen to meet and talk um, at that not at a pre-bid conference, I met my first teaming partner at a small business event. I met another small business who needed a subcontractor who was an acquisition professional. So you see those relationships, just by talking to those individuals, I found out that there was a need and an opportunity. Well, and then I offered my service. Well, yes, I'm a DeWea level three certified contracting professional. Um, do you have any room on the team for me? You see what I'm saying? So that's another opportunity and that's a way of conducting your market research to find out, oh yeah, there's people out here and then they need teaming partners or subcontractors. So that's just, just another tip. I know I got off a little bit, but I wanted to tell you that because I wanted to make sure you understand the importance of those building those relationships because that is how I found uh, several opportunities because they I, I, they had a need, I had a service, and then they offered it to me. And you best believe I jumped right on it. So you have to be prepared. And if I had not been prepared, then I wouldn't have been able to pursue that opportunity. Now, and then selling to the government continues. So we got to develop that value proposition. And that's by crafting a compelling capability statement to so to show uh your value proposition for the government agency and if you're only looking to go after primes then you will put primes and then how do you differentiate yourself and so we've i've recorded a video on just nothing but crafting a compelling capability statement and it's so many other videos we've created on that capability statement because that is your marketing material that's how you're going to tell them about once you go after these opportunities okay i'm going after this opportunity i got to be able to craft what i want and then differentiate okay what makes you different from the other person who's selling uh, janitorial services. Um, why should I go? Do you have the eco-friendly products? I mean, have you been in business for 25 years or are you up the street? Are you a local vendor? You know, what differentiates you from your competitors to make that agency want to use their purchase card or use those simplified um, small buys? Okay. And I'm going to stop right here because I know I went normally I try to stop at the top of the you know to ask for questions <laughs> yes do I have any questions for this part before we get to the practical walkthrough um yeah we well there are lots of questions so I'll just pick <laughs> a few out <laughs> okay okay I know okay. people are people are uh, anxious to uh or excited to get to the practical walkthrough yeah all right so I'll, I'll just we'll, we'll do it backwards um mm -hmm. Basically, there are people, a lot of people are asking about the slides and the recording. Yes, you will be receiving this after the presentation, as always. So no fear there. Um, let's see. Can you still look for, for micro purchases, even if it doesn't have your NACE code? Well, it, it, so let me answer that one. It's the short is, it's not, you wouldn't call it the micro purchase um, necessarily. It's because they're sometimes they don't list the GPC purchases for us at all. So that's the reason why it's hard to find those micro purchases because the GPC card holder changes constantly. And none of that stuff is public um, information like that. So when you're looking for different opportunities for them, that's why you have to know kind of like the pricing, if you will. So that way, you know, for these kinds of services, um, you could, um, they can possibly be around 20,000 or less or stuff like that. It's, everything is like, you got to figure it out almost, if you will, because for anything under 25K, they don't have to post it. You see what I'm saying? They don't have, that's not a requirement. 
But if it's over 25K, then they have to post it public. That's why it's on Sam.gov. So the opportunities that you're trying to look for and identify for the micro purchase, those are like, okay, I was at the Department um, of Treasury and then they said, this is the GPC card holder, which they hold that information. Even the contracting officer don't even always know who the con the GPC card holder is. So that's why when we say micro purchase, uh, it, it, we just say that micro purchase as if like it's telling you that it's under ten thousand dollars. You see what I'm saying? So just like simplified acquisition threshold is two hundred and fifty thousand, and then if you want to do minor construction. The GPC thing is like, what, 2000 now, if I'm not mistaken. And if you're going after services, it's under 2500 So that's why I'm saying you, it's, it's, it's kind of hard to explain that, but there's no one place you can go to get all that information. I wish it was, because if it was, I'd be there. But it's not a one place to get all that information. Okay, I hope that helps. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Next question. If I don't have any past performance, can I go in for micro purchases? Okay. So remember the micro purchases under that's the GPC hard holder, right? So technically you don't have to have past performance because they're just looking for the people who offer that service. So um, for example, if you have a janitorial services and they want to use the government. But the thing is, can they use the government purchase card for janitorial services under 2,500? You see what I'm saying? So that's why I say it depends on the service. So if you offer in some pencils, pens, and paper, of course we can use the uh, micro purchase card because that's not going to go over the threshold and make me have to do a contract. So when it goes over $10,000 for uh, that's the office, that's like supplies and stuff like that. Then now for training, they can go up a little bit. Uh, I believe it's up to 25K. So that's why I always check in the uh, the new thresholds because things change. It, you know, they keep changing the thresholds. So that's why it's important to check the threshold for different products and services because you see micro purchase uh in their mind is $2,000 and below. So anything over that, and they're not going to do a split purchase. So say you were selling it for $4,000, I'm going to get $2,000 here and $2,000. No, that's called a split purchase. We can't do that. You see what I'm saying? So that's why it's important to learn the rules of the game so you know how to play it. So you know, oh, no, I want to get into the government contracting space, so I'm going to start off with office supplies or I'm going to sell some nails. I'm going to do that. You know, whatever I can do to just get started, you have to really think about that because you still got to tie it into your strategy. So later on when you're trying to grow and they see all oh, you've been selling is this office supplies, but now all of a sudden now you want to go after IT, that ain't going to work. You see what I'm saying? So that's why it's important to do the strategies, learn the rules, and then you can then put a, uh, a plan together, if you will, write it out. Okay, I want to sell this. Now, how does it correlate to this so I can get up to a bigger buy? You see what I'm saying? So it's like, we, 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 we're playing puzzle. It's like a puzzle piece. You got to put this piece together, put this piece together, put this piece together to get the whole big picture. So each session is going to um, make it a little bit more clearer, clearer. But I got to definitely, these are some good questions and I'm going to take them and incorporate it into the next training. So that way I can really know the pain points of my small businesses so I can really craft the training for this. All right, go ahead, okay. Yasmin. Sakisha, uh, we'll do a couple more and then we'll go on to the walkthrough. Uh, next one is, I'm a little confused on the no bid process. Is it necessary mm -hmm. to submit a no bid form? If so, why? Okay, so now- if so, like I know for the fact for Emma, they they have that bid form. Uh, the Emma is the e Maryland marketplace. That's for the state, and they have that form in there that says no bid. Um, or if you're not, well, it's not no bid. It just says I don't. I'm not going to pursue this opportunity because of whatever. And then you have to go in there and write all that information in, and then submit that because they want to know what's the challenges small businesses face so that way they can um, craft their solicitations better so more people can respond. 
fine. So now if you're trying to send a no bid decision, like say you want to um, connect with that um, agency and you're trying to send them a no bid because the reason why I can't go after this opportunity is because um, we didn't have enough time to bid on this opportunity. Now that's a good reason to send a no bid decision. Now, if you just sending them a no bid decision because you're trying to tell them that you don't have a team and partner, then they're not, you, you see what I'm saying? It's a, it, it has to be a reason why you're sending the big decision. It was a wonderful opportunity, at, but I can't bid on it because I, or you send in a big decision because you want to tell them, Hey, I want to bid on this. Can you extend this? You see what I'm saying? So everything is case by case basis. And the reason why it's gotta be a reason why you're sending it. It's not just to send it. Because yes, you could send it, but they're not going to look at it because they're looking at all of the bids that's got to come in. So those no bids is basically, sometimes they look at it, sometimes they don't, but it's got to be a reason why you're sending it. Okay. Okay. And if an opportunity is not listed on sam.gov, where can we find them? Okay. So that's when you go to another so that's when we're going to go to the forecast remember if it's not on sam.gov we're going to go to that agency's procurement forecast to see if something could possibly come to sam.gov now the and that's why it's important that's why i keep saying I, I harp on those agency relationships because then you so say we don't went to department of army's um page we looked at their procurement forecast because that's where they list all the stuff they want to buy that's they want list they wish list oh i think i'm gonna get this and so forth and so on right that hasn't came to sam.gov yet then oh by the way you got your state solicitations so if you're in the state of maryland i've already told you that's the e-maryland marketplace they're putting their state requirements in there so no, everything is not on sam.gov. It's the state stuff is on the local and state is on there. And that's pretty easy. Not, I'm not going to say easy. It's easier because it's less com complex. And to me, small businesses do better starting off with their local and state because the requirements are not so uh, complex. It's easier to get it, but they require past performance. So you're going to have to team or do a percentage of the work. And that's why I love um, the state because you could do a percentage of the work just to get started. So you can start building relationships, learning who you wanna work with. Say you go with this team and partner and they're horrible, you stuck with them, you know what I'm saying? And to the contract end. So that's why it's important to start those little things first so you know how to deal with people. And then at the end, it, um, it'll just make it better. So no, everything is not on Sam. You got the procurement forecasts. That's for stuff to come. You got Sam.gov, and then you got your state. So if if you're in Texas and you're in Florida, go to your state procurement um, portal so you can learn what opportunities are there. Go to the training so you can learn how to use that database to really um, scale your business. Okay, go ahead. Okay, thanks, Akisha. I think that's enough questions for now. We can move yes. on. Yes, because you know, we and then like I told you team, what I'm going to do is I'm going to incorporate all these questions so we'll have a frequently asked questions. My goal is to have that frequently asked questions from last session. And then so when you when we uh, put the same training out again, it's going to incorporate those and then make them the training so comprehensive for you. So it's like a little cheat sheet uh, for you to, to use as you grow your business or you can uh, send one of your employees there, one of your sub, hey, go watch this video. You know, send them to the YouTube, go watch this video. I don't have time to bring you up to speed, but you can go watch the video, bring you up to speed, and then come meet with me. You understand what I'm saying? It's those different ways of hitting the ground running, you know? Okay, so now, the building the long-term relationships, before we get ready to take our break, I want to cover this. Okay, so my first thing I'm going to ask you when you come in your counseling session, how many opportunities do you have in your pipe, I mean, your um, contacts you have in your CRM? I want to know how many team and partners you got in there. I want to know how many people you didn't reached out to. I want to know how many 
agencies you're trying to go after at once. Because like I said, you got to have an email campaign to go with all of them. Then you got to have a, a strategy for each one uh, because each agency does things differently. So even when you go in there and look in the source of salt notices and the RFIs, you're going to see each agency does those differently. And then you sitting up here trying to multitask, learn this agency, learn this agency, and you ain't wanting nothing because you're all over the place. You got to, you got to focus. Focus is the key in this game. You got to focus. Once you've developed that one, then move on to the next one. Okay, I done built my relationship with the Department of Army, so now I'm going to move on to the Department of Navy. But it's so many things under the Department of Army. You can be there for, for 22 years and 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 because and, I've been with the DISA. I've been with the Mission Installation Contracting Command. It's so many different things you can do under just the Department of Army. So that's why I always tell people, pick it out, do some research, see if you like it, and then go from there. And then attending those pre-big conferences. The pre-big conferences are so important because that's when you're going to get that intel. Like I said, the teaming and partners, everything. And then attending those agency events in person or virtual. I've met many people on the virtual. I've met many people in person. That's how I was able to get on those teams. That's how I was able to get those contracting opportunities and um, and then build my past performance and then building your team and uh, database. So those are important for us when we're developing. And then the last thing before we go on our break, because we're gonna go on our five minute break. What's gonna happen next is our five minute break. And then when I come back, what I'm going to do is it's going to be uh, I have to go log into Sam because Sam times out. So that's the reason why I had to do it and, you know, have to do the practical at the end, because what happens, it times out, then all that other stuff that happens when you're dealing with those different software. So that's why we do the practical at first. I mean, the um the walkthrough and talk about it, because what happens is why I'm doing the training, people want to ask questions. So no, so because. That's why I talked about it during this session. So when we get in the training session, you can still ask questions, but then we can really go through and I don't have to keep stopping and then it times out and then I have to log in again and then we'll, you know, we'll lose that momentum. So that's the, that's the reason why we had to separate it that way. And so what it's going to be is a step-by-step -step guide navigating SAM.gov. Then what we're going to do is set up the save search and you so you can receive the notifications in your email. And what I recommend you always do is put that rule on there and that it goes into that folder. So you have a BD folder that you use to um, keep all them emails in. So when you sit down, got your sheet, you got all your stuff ready, and then you're going to go to, okay, so this op these four opportunities came in for RFIs and I'm going to and then you do your bid, no bid decision. You have your little checklist you've made. Okay, this is my NAICS code. This is my PSC code. This is one of the services I'm offering. Um, I do have the team in place to go after this opportunity. Boom. And then you move, you put that on the pursue or no pursue or bid to no bid, you know. And then that's the first review. Now, you reviewed all your stuff and then now you got to go put in an order of priority, right? So now you know priority one. Okay, this one is due on the 17th. This one is due on the 31st. So then I got to work this action first. You see what I'm saying? So it's a process of steps that you have to do. And then when you're building those relationships, because now you're going to go back and look and see, did I attend any big pre-bid conferences for this opportunity? Uh, have I been... Um, to these industry events before with this agency. You know, you're starting to brainstorm and then write all that stuff down. So next time when you go through your checklist, because the checklist is a living document, every time you learn something new, you add it. And then next time you'll go through, you'll be like, oh, I attended this event. Oh, I have a good chance of winning this one because this small business specialist is very uh, responsive, uh, responsive. So they always email their people and let them know they was awarded the contract or they always be emailing out their people, letting them know that they have an industry day. Now, if you going after an agency that doesn't communicate with their small businesses who who doesn't answer emails and you send up there hitting your head against the, the brick wall. No, move them down the priority list. Say we're going to circle back to them because that one's going to take a little bit more uh, initiative, a little more grit, <laughs> you know, a little more everything else. Okay. Welcome back, everybody. 
Hello, everyone, and welcome back. <clears throat> All right, it's time to get started with the practical walkthrough. And so, like I said before, if you have questions, you're going to put it in the chat, and we're going to answer those questions at the end because we do not want to time out in SAM. So I've logged into this SAMS. Okay, so just do a little orientation before we get started. So you always look at your... Um, updates and you always look for the an official website of the United States. That's how you always know that you're on the right website for the um sam.gov. This is the official website we're using. It's 100 percent free. So when people call you asking you to buy their services for Sam that remember it's free. So make sure you're at the right website. So once you've looked at your notification, just close it out. You're good to go. This is where you go to get started. If you're getting started, uh, this is where you go. If you don't have your SAM.gov, you cannot save these searches. You have to have an account. And then most prime contractors want all their subcontractors to have a registered SAM account. So this is very important. Add that to your checklist. And that way you can be ready. So when the opportunities come, you will always have them. Okay? So then the next thing is um, you've already got your account register. So these, this is the one we're going to always focus on is the contract opportunities and then the searches. This is the searches where you search for those different opportunities. And this is where you save your searches. Then the data bank is where you pull that research that we were talking about. OK, the research to let you know um, what opportunities are out there. So the research that I pulled today for the training, because of um, the limited time we had, I went on and pulled the training that I wanted to talk about in today's session for the practical walkthrough. Now, how you understand and use these things, you look, you use their help desk. So say you don't know how to do something, you're going to click the help button, then you're going to come up to this right here, it's going to come to fsd.gov, the official website, right? Then each one tells you how to do, they got the glossaries, the videos, how to use each section of this. So if I go a little too fast, you can go back here and look at the videos. You can look at everything. You can rewatch the video. But because we're so limited on time and we have so much to cover, I wanted to make sure you knew what was out here for you. Okay. So now we're going to go back to the data bank. Now we're going to go back to home first and contracting opportunities. Now we talked about those contracting opportunities. So the first thing you're going to go to advanced search. That's just how I do it. Then you're going to go right here on this side. This is where you're going to identify what agency. So I like to do an agency because I want to show you how to use it. So that way you know exactly how to do it. So we're going to say agriculture. Okay, so now you see we put the agriculture. You see how many opportunities are out there. So that's why it's important that you use your filters and then save the search. So we know we this is one of our target agencies. Then we don't want to look at everything. Me, I, me, because I want to stay within my wheelhouse and I want to stay, um, I want to get a little bit ahead, but not too far ahead. So let's just look at the next week. Now, we want all the updates. Only reason why I say anytime we get an update, because how about they do an amendment? How about they do a notice? How about they do anything? I want to know about it. Okay, so that's why I want the updates. Now we want to talk about what do we want to do? So I split mine up. I like to look at my special notices, my sources, saw my pre-solicitation together. Because this is not where the, this is money, but it's not the money now solicitations is where i want to be focused in the combined synopsis is when i'm trying to bid on things now this is the pre this is where we're going to be looking at the the pre-solicitations so then you save that you see how you saved it it populated in there now this is where you have to know those next codes 
This is why we talked about those snakes codes. And then the website, I believe, um, let me put the, I'm going to put that in there for you. The NAICS code, I believe, did we put the NAICS code in there yet? But no, I'm going to just put it in here. So that way you know exactly where you find your NAICS codes. Okay, I'll bring it over here for you. And then we'll throw it, it's right here, the NAICS code. So that way you can search your NAICS codes and find all of your NAICS codes. And then we talked about the PSC codes as well. And you go to this spot. Hold on, let me get the spot for over there for you for the PSC codes. Because I believe we, I don't, I'm not sure if we put it in the chat yet. Well, it's not populating for some reason. So I'll have to give that one to y'all. Okay. <clears throat> But, and then all you have to do is look for that one and then you'll know what the PSC, just Google PSC codes and it's gonna pop up for you, the PSC codes. But I wanna keep on going with the training. So if you decided, okay, we wanna do uh, whichever next code that you choose for this walkthrough, let's just do, let's pick the 54, the first, this one right here. So then now we have our next code that we have identified. And that's all of the 54s. Now, if you want a specific NAICS code, then you put the specific NAICS code in because you what we're trying to do is narrow it down because you see we had 10 results now. Now, say we wanted to do it only set asides because you don't have any certifications yet. You're still waiting. You're not a hub zone. You're definitely not an AA, but I'm a total small business. I'm gonna put total then I want the small partial small business. So I'm doing both because if any part of small business, I want it because that's an opportunity for me to win. So now you see how many we've narrowed down to two results. You see how by you putting those filters in there, you just narrow things down and only focus on stuff that's doable. And remember, these are special notices or sources sought notices. They still have to turn over to a solicitation uh, because it's the pre-phase. They're just doing their research to see. Now, the pre, now only reason why I like to see for the uh, the um, the special notices because you're going to see those um, who they intend to offer this award to. So, for instance, if you look at this one, you see they said a notice of intent to award a sole source. So to one person, they about to give this to somebody, uh, a small business out here, a sole source. This is not a set aside. So that's the difference between the sole source and the set aside. The set aside is for small businesses with these different codes right here. This is the set of sides. And then you have a sole source to either an AA, small business, so forth and so on. Now, if you're like me, I put in here my state because I only want local. If it's out of the state, I'm not doing it. Because if you're self-performing this opportunity, you need to be local or unless you want to be jumping on flights trying to get somewhere uh, to fulfill an opportunity or maybe you want to move or whatever, that's up to you. But then you can narrow it down even more and put the state. But for this one, I'm not gonna put state. And then what you would do is you will call it whatever you wanna call it. So you'll hit save. And then we're gonna call it for this training uh, purposes only. I'm put the Apex training. But you put whatever you want. And then this is for our uh, pre-solicitation stuff. So we're going to say SSN and RFIs, whatever you want to put. So you'll know what this search is saved for. So when you go back and pull it up and you receive that notification and what a notification looks like is you receive that notification in your inbox, and then you will just hit view only to update records, but you have to have been signed in to view those records. If you're not signed in, you cannot view those records. So now let's orientate on this document. So now you see 
that this this response is due on the 23rd and so well there it's going to be on the 23rd because they're letting you know that they're about to um do a notice but if it wasn't and it was a source of sought notice that's the time you have to get it to them you understand what i'm saying so that's how you get it to them so then this is how you view those safe searches so i put other ones in here too just so you can see um, that you can save many safe searches in here. So say you want to do SSN daily. You click on this right here. You can see that I've set it up uh, for responses due, active, and then I want a total small business, a veteran-owned small business because I'm veteran-owned uh, certified. Then I want to know but the uh, special notices, sources sought, pre-solicitation for that code. So, and then you can always go in there and change it. Then you want to see how I get notifications. You can just stop notifying if you don't want to get it. If you want to delete it, you can delete it. If you want to edit it, if you want to download the results, then you download the results. That's up to you. Because if you download the results, then it's in an Excel spreadsheet. And if you have a BD person who does all your business development for you, you say, here are the list of opportunities I want you to um, uh, assess. And then um, let me know if we're going to do a bid, no bid decision. You know, that's when these, um, the automation and different things will help you to be successful. And so, you can see I've set up the one for the janitorial search. Well, you see for this one for the next three months for though there's nothing you see. And that's the small business set aside. So you can see that having these safe search, you can see the different opportunities are out here for you to look at. Now let's go back to the contract because I always started back from the beginning. So you can see how I got to where I got and then, so we talked about the safe search and looking up the different opportunities and how you find the opportunities, but you have to go through and read the opportunity to see if it's one for you. Okay, so I wanted to find one that was already ready so you could see what it looks like. Let me see if I have one right here. Okay right here. So I clicked on my notice. Uh oh, I apologize. Let me get this over here. Okay. So I clicked over here and I had five results from one of my searches that I set up for this SSN R5. So then that's when you're going to go through and see when the current. So now this one is due already. So it's too late to even go after this opportunity because you see it's 18. It was at 08. So they're about to pretty much archive this. And so you can't go out there. They're telling you what department this is because in this safe search, I didn't specify an agency or anything. I wanted to know what is all available. You see, all available. And then you go in here and then you find out, okay, so Department of uh, Commerce is not one of my businesses. I don't want to even go after them. That's how you know, because you did the research already. You know that that's not one of your customers you're trying to go after. And then their sub tier is the U.S. Patent and Trade Office. And then this is the office right here. So then, then the next one was the rocket. See, here's a request for information. And this one, this is Department of Interior. And then it tells you who the sub tier in the office. Well, say I wanted to go after this one, or if this is a good one, then you will go in and we have time to respond because a sources sought notice doesn't require as much time as a RFQ and a RFP, the request for quote, and then the um, the request for quote, and then also the um, the source of sought notice. Okay, so let's go on this one so you can see. So then you, because I'm signed in, I could follow this opportunity because I'm signed in. So that's why it's always important to sign in so you can follow it download 
because you want to be able to download all this information so that way either it's going to be you doing the business uh, development, doing the bid, no bid, or you're going to send it to whoever you have or upload it in a folder where they can go action the items. Then it has all of the other information in here um, and which NAICS code it is. And if this NAICS code has not, you the NAICS codes have to be on if you're going after opportunities, please make sure that NAICS code is on your SAMS registration. That's another thing I'm seeing is a lot of small businesses are going after opportunities that are not on their SAMS registration. That's why before you register, or if you already registered and you know that this is a NAICS code that you want to go after, because when they go award, you, they're going to go look on your SAM registration to see if you have that NAICS code. So, and I always recommend the, uh, the PSC codes too, because that helps you to see which one are they buying all the time. Are they buying my Bravo or the B504, my special studies analysis, or are they looking at my, you know, you can see which services they are purchasing the most. Then you can see right here where they're downloading all of the information, right? So they're downloading the information. And then here we go. There's the statement of work. They've told you the information, the document, you download it. Now, see, that's why sometimes we win, sometimes we look, because you see how they don't have a phone number because they don't want the calls. Sometimes they have a phone number, sometimes they don't. But you see that you have an email. So that's why it's important. Don't just send them no capability statement. Actually take the time, find a requirement, now you can go after these different opportunities because you have the POC, you know who the POC is. Sometimes they even have a secondary POC because um, two people may be working opportunities or they might have an admin, you just never know. And that way um, you can put both people on the email so someone will respond to you when you submit the source of sought notice. But be sure to read this. You have to download the document to read it. And we're going to dive deeper in the proposal writing level one training when we're going to go over it. Because of um, we're pressed for time, I can't do all of the different, it's a phased approach. So that way you can get one step at a time and then we'll go walk through those opportunities we've identified for our next training. Okay, so and then so like I said, and you know um, where the uh, the contracting uh, address is. It's right here. <clears throat> so that's basically it for this one. So now you see how you follow the records, uh, how you download the re records, and this is where you're gonna go to look for current opportunities that you can possibly pursue. Now you've went in there, you've done it, you found out all the current opportunities that you want to pursue. Now we're going to have to validate it. So the validating comes in play when you have to go to the data bank. Okay, you cannot use the data blank if you're not signed in. So you have to be signed in to use the data bank. This is where you're going to pull that report that I've been talking about to validate, to see how many times the agency is purchasing uh, your products and services. So you can favorite it, you can, do, but so you can see what it looks like. Okay, this report displays the dollars and the actions for awards by contractor type. And then the report also, uh, drills down into the contracting, which I'm, that's not what I'm using it for. What this session is for is to see what they're buying. So I know, do they buy my service? Because if they don't buy my service, why am I working and so hard to get this with agency when they've never even purchased my service before? So that's what this report is for. That's why it's important that we walk you through the process so you can see why you're not winning contracts or maybe why you're getting frustrated because some things you're not doing correctly. So then we're going to put in here, we want, it won't, let you put a lot of information in it'll block you so you have to be careful of how much information you're putting in there okay so then we're just gonna say 1001 
And then we're going to say 20, 22 for this one. And then we're going to say 09, 30, 20, 23. Okay. Then you have to put something because you, if you want to narrow it down and not see everything, you still have to put what agency that you're going to put. And I'm just going to keep it the same. The uh, Department of Agriculture, right? Then I'm going to hit execute. And sometimes the reports time out, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. But that's the reason why I always go in previously, pull the report and then do the training. So that way you'll see what a pulled report looks like. And I, I recommend that you go through all the different trainings so you can see that uh, there's so much data you can use to really help you be competitive. They're telling you everything you need to know. They're telling you the large business actions, how many dollars, how many actions they have taken with just this agency. Then you're seeing the large bit. And then I'm always focusing on small business because what we're trying to do is build our small business industry base so you can be successful. They're telling you they've done the HBCUs, minorities, other educations. And if you want to really look at it granular, I recommend you download it. You export it and download it so you can see what it looks like. So this is what the downloaded report looks like. OK, because because of this, it takes so time. sometimes it times out on you and takes so long. So I didn't want it to time out on us while we're doing our training. So this is what the report looks like. And so I always recommend just go to home, you know, hit that button right here, insert and make a pivot table so you can look at it now learning how to do pivot tables and all that. You got to go watch some YouTube videos. I know the basics of it and that's it. So I just click on that and make uh, a, and this is what it looks like at the end results when I created the pivot table, because I wanted to know what all the information about this agency that I'm thinking about. And you can see, I, and then once you create the pivot table, I always go in here and, you know, mess with the buttons and, and support it the way I want to look at it and what data I'm trying to glean from this. So you can see that agriculture marketing services, look at all those buys, you see what I'm saying? Now we know what they're buying, okay? It's so many ways you can go on there and pull this data. My goal is to make it the easiest way I know how to tell you so you can pull the data and get started easily. Um, uh, there are so many trainings out there, video tell you, well, pull this data from this way, pull it this way, pull it that way, take the training, Go get the uh, the training that works best for you, but just get the information. You want to know what they're buying. They didn't bought support management services. They they didn't bought boxes, carton crates. <laughs> they didn't bought lease rental office warehousing. Built. They didn't did house. They call it housekeeping and warehousing and storages. You see what I'm saying? You want to focus on only the areas that you are selling, and that way you know. Okay, they bought this. 12 times. They bought this seven times. They bought this and then take your time, go through the research. So that way, you know, so when you go over into the contracting opportunities, you're using the correct keywords. You're using the correct PSC codes because you see they're buying it. So you can see, well, you know, we gonna eat. So you see that food and vegetables. <laughs> you, We love to eat. So that's going to definitely be on there. So even they're selling bags and snacks, you know, you can go deep in this report as much so miscellaneous printing. So say if you have printing services, you want to offer something, they got the print miscellaneous printings. They have all those different things, construction. But that's why I said focus on the things that they're buying. And then those one-offs, yeah, you can probably win those too. But that means they're not buying a lot of it. You understand? We're looking for stuff they're constantly buying. And for these different agencies. So, you know, for the agriculture marketing service, I'm looking at the names they're using. That's all I'm looking for in descriptions, how they're using it. So I can go in here and search for these opportunities so I can get some of this. So then look at them. They didn't bought this other QC test inspect miscellaneous 139 times. So I know I want that one. You know, it's, it's 
whatever you're selling, that's what you have to go in here and look for. Then they said housekeeping guard. You know, what, what is that? So it's about just learning what they call things. So I don't use the wrong name and then positioning your business to win. Okay, so let's look at the next one. So you're just seeing that they're purchasing these op opportunities. So the, here's another one at the Agricultural Research Service. This is, they, look, they need IT technical help support. They're just breaking it down. I just always want to know what they're calling things so that way I know I'm using the right language. <clears throat> and you take your time and you go through this and you find uh, those names and those things. So now how you find out, because you can't look at the past stuff because it's in archive, it's gone. That's why you go look for these opportunities that are named the same thing. So you can look at the performance work statement. So you can look at the pricing sheet. You can go look at, um, these are current opportunities that have these same names that you're looking at. So you can get that um, his, that information you need so you can, that's another puzzle, part of the puzzle piece that you was leaking because they was like, oh, I can't find a contract for in inspection fire control equipment. Well, how many times have they bought it? And are they currently trying to purchase it again? Well, let me go look and see so I can go in there and purchase it and see what the, the description is. Um, and then to get a copy of that performance work statement or to get a copy of that solicitation, to get a copy of the, this is how you're going to get those little small buys because you got to find those small buys that they're purchasing. They're not, it's no one way just to go and sort and say, all I want to get is all of the um, 25K and below because it's not, it don't work that way because mostly they have everything under SAP uh, the simplified acquisition is under 250000 So yes, it's good. And then yes, you can do it, but it's knowing how to do it. And that's what's going to help you be successful in um, going after these opportunities. Okay. And then I also, let me see if I can unhide it because I also, I wanted to know how much it was. So let's see. I said, well, let me start looking at some dollar thresholds and how much have they obligated so when i start seeing all these minuses i was like wait a minute so they they must be taking away some money so let me go down to some people that ain't taking away money so it's all about looking at the numbers basically how many times they purchased this what was this that they purchased how much did they purchase it for is this realistic can i do it i mean do they only do big buys? Do they do small buys? So that just added more uh, in your toolkit, if you will. And I don't want to, let me make sure Sam's doesn't um, time out on us. So when you, so like I said, when you're trying to pull that report that I pulled, you have to hit the button and then it export it. And you can say, I want to expel with a plain text, however you want it uh, exported. Then to drill down, if you want to look at it in this format, you hit that drill button, you hit drill down, and you want to just look at the contracting agency name. Well, then you hit that contracting agency name, and then it populates. So that way you can drill down. But you see, when you do it this way, it's not as with the Excel, you can manipulate, you can do formulas. Does you can make several different types of pivot tables. Say you're looking for total education actions, then you go do a pivot table to look at education actions, or look at or how about you looking for other education actions? You can go through to get all that data that you're trying to uh, validate. Is there an actual requirement? You know, because you know you have to validate that there's an actual requirement. Because if there's no requirement then no one's going to purchase it. So there has to be a requirement. So even if you are, so you see the different, um, they, they, they monitor everything. So you can tell, so if I want to be black owned actions, they're putting that in here because you know, this all feeds into that small business school card. So that's why it's important that we capture the data. So that way we can ensure that we're meeting the mandate to educate small businesses, to grow small businesses and in, um, in the industry. 
and you can see that it, it's a wealth of knowledge in these uh, reports and learning how to pull the reports and learning how to read it is is going to be key in um, growing in the government contracting space. Okay, so we've done the reports. So I recommend that you take the time, you go back through the standard reports and become familiar with all the different reports out here because they have the one, so say you got a GSA schedule, they have some information out there for the GSA schedule. For those who don't have a GSA schedule, uh, you will have to go to the training for the GSA schedule because there's some requirements to have a GSA schedule because they really want you to have past performance. They want you to be generating revenue, then already have a particular customer in mind who's going to be using that vehicle. And if you haven't already identified that, then I don't believe that you're, well, you're not ready because if you get the GSA schedule and then do not use it, they're going to cancel your schedule. And then in order to get back on the schedule, then you'll have to do it all over again. Uh, and this time they're going to want a marketing report or a marketing plan, if you will, on how do you plan on doing better this time when we give you the schedule back than you did the last time. Because last I checked, it was a 25K threshold just um, that you have to maintain on that schedule. So you see why we're training our small businesses right now how to first generate their first 25K. And then each year you can progressively grow. You're growing your past performance. You're preparing yourself for the GSA schedule. So that way you can um, have more, um, you'll have more I guess, leverage, if you will, a better way to say, um, to position you to be on the GSA schedule because you are very much aware of how to build your business. So it's, like I said, it's so many things that I could go on and on about in this training, but I want to give you a basic high level overview so you can take this and add to it. You can take this and take your time and go in each of these reports to see what database um, information that you can pull that's going to make it easy for you to go after those different things. And it will just help you on this, this, this um, path to government contracting because it's not easy doing government contracting because if it was easy, everybody would do it. But it's definitely for those who are persistent who do not mind putting in the work. And then soon as this training is done, you need to apply it. Application is the key to being able to function in here. So I'm gonna let you look at the last few of the reports in here. They have so many good reports in here, but, and then also the reason why I don't go through too many of them because uh, now you have to learn how to synthesize the data. So it's about now, okay, I've extracted the data. Now, how can I analyze the data so I can make a decision? And many people, they can get the data, but they don't know how to uh, analyze the data to make a decision. Should I go with this team and partner? Should I go after this opportunity? Do we have a line of credit to pay our people if we um, do not get paid for two or three months. See, these are the things that we don't talk about that happens to small businesses while you waiting for your contract to be awarded or someone protested the contract or so forth and so on. So these are the things you have to think about. That's why we always recommend that you start off with 25K and below. Now, if you're able to sustain that, then go get you another 25K. What, right, right? We have 50K right now. And then get another contract and build slowly so you don't fall because we've had some small business win these contracting opportunities and then they couldn't perform because it was too big for them. You know, it wasn't, and they hadn't prepared nor had they learned um, the rules of government contracting as a prime contractor, there are certain things you have to adhere to. And as a subcontractor, it is the same. So as we get ready to wrap up this training, 
I wanted to go over a few things to make sure high level that you see. And you can look and see if they have some local area set aside or different things of that nature. So just go through those data reports, favorite them. So when you hit the favorite button, they come over. And there might be other ways that you can build a ad hoc report. So you probably could build that ad hoc report as well. However, the thing about building ad hoc report, you got to know which data to pull. That's why I recommend you just use the standards. And when you learn the data that you want to pull, then you could create custom reports in the ad hoc section. And they have plenty of training on that. So you can see. So to recap all of this. So remember the, the tabs we're using are the uh, data bank. We're using our searches. We're going and we're setting up our save searches. So that way we're saving time and you see it runs every day for you. And then it sends you that notification. So you know my daily update for this week, I got four opportunities I have to go after. Two of those I decided I'm gonna bid on. Two of them I decided are not. So you've already started building your battle rhythm. You set up all your searches and you know how many opportunities are out there for you, how many that you can bid on. Then you will receive a daily email. So this will notify you daily because it runs the report daily because I um, that's how they set it up. You know, it's just to run it. And that's why it's important when you're setting up this do you want you got to set it up so it's not pulling everything you got to put your set asides in there you got to put your next codes and i recommend you put your next code so if your next code was 54 16 11 for management you put 54 16 11 but if you're not going so if you're doing after the janitorial service then you only want janitorial services search so say you serve uh um, have landscaping janitorial services, and you have another an administrative support that I recommend you save three different searches. So that way, now you can bump, bump them all together. But when um, the person going in there looking to do your business person who's going in there evaluating, say they're not the same technical expert, then they have to go through those same opportunities. So you want to, I want everything. I'm always trying to think of ways to improve it and make it easier so that way the small whoever who's going to, I'm going to pass this assignment off to whether it be my assistant or it be the business development person who's got to go through and do the next part create the folders create the bid decision checklist do all that this is going to be important because when we take off in the next session we're going to start off with the opportunity that we identified we identified a source of sought notice or we identified the RFQ. And if we have enough time, we'll go through. So, or maybe we'll do the source of sought notice only. And then in the next proposal level two, then we'll go deeper because the source of sought notice is the pre, the pre-solicitation. That's in the phase where we can still possibly talk to the contracting person because once it's a solicitation, all talking needs to be through email because what they tell one contractor, they have to tell them all. So that way, no one thinks that um, that the contracting officer is favoring this specific contractor or vendor. So you see why it's important to get it in the uh, procurement forecast phase or the solicitation phase. Ideally, it's on the procurement forecast because that's when you can have the most conversations. And so that's why it's important that we um, establish those battle rhythms, understanding the differences between the procurement forecast. That means this is what I think I want. And then to the uh, sources on notice in RFI. Okay, now we're about to see who out there can give us what I want. 
And then now that we didn't close that out and we want to go to a solicitation, okay, now who's going to bid on this contract? And then we're going to evaluate and then we're going to make a selection, right? So that's why you need to understand the different phases so you can go after those small buys. And it's important that you understand the words they're using to go after these small buys so you can actively find and bid on those opportunities. But many of you don't even know how to find it, so you can't bid on it. So now that we've went over how to find those opportunities in our next session, so let me give you the date for our next session. That's gonna be August. So, And I also put it in the notes. So always be gonna keep the trainings. I try to keep them in the notes section. When you get your slides, register immediately for your training. Put it on the calendar, set that notification button so you are aware of when that training, because after the training, that's it. Then we're going to move to the next phase and you're going to be behind. So it's important to stay um, um, uh, stay with the um, series so that way you can move along because it's easier to understand a concept when you're able to walk along doing a practical walkthrough and being able to ask those questions before um, the session is over so and then you can go back and rewatch it versus getting a video that you've seen after the event happened, which is still very good, but then you can get that interaction, especially if it's a general question that will benefit all, you know, to benefit all the small people on this call. So um, as I close for this session, so we can start um, listening to um, any questions that I didn't um, answer, and then if you feel like you don't want to say anything, you still put those questions in and then we're going to um, we're going to add those questions to the session next time when I give this training. Uh, you know, I always say Lord's will because, you know, I may not be here the next day or here or there. So we just always but it will prepare the next instructor uh, instructor to have a well um, rounded class with those questions we got from this training and have like a little frequently asked questions slide or handout to go along with the PowerPoint. So that way you can put that in your toolkit for your team. Because remember our main objective, yes, we're going to crawl, walk, run. That's the focus. And that way, you're not going to always be self-performing these contracts. One day, you're going to have a team and you want to be able to train that team because, you know, just many hands make light work, period. I mean, it's many hands because doing everything yourself, if you get sick, you can't um, show up for work, you got to have a substitute. So that's why it's important to establish uh, your, your libraries, your training, uh, all these things that's going to make you a successful um, small business owner. And then the last uh, link, uh, the tab we're going to go over. So you got the home search data is focus on this. This is where you focus. The contracting opportunities. If you ain't bidding, bidding you ain't winning. That's just the way it is. I know that's bad grammar, but if you're not bidding you're not winning and if you're not finding the opportunities how can you know how much the opportunities are going for how can you find the micro purchase if you will under ten thousand dollars and understanding supplies is different than services and different than micro purchase they lump them all together it's not so it's not so you have to separate because minor construction can only go over a certain threshold, which last I checked, it was $2,000. And then uh, services, $2,500. And then um, supplies and training up to $25,000. You see? So those are the things you need to focus on. So if you are good at IT training, you better get you an IT training set up and start promoting that thing and selling it so people can purchase your service. And because you want them purchased and using that GPC card so you get the money now so you can start putting that money in your revenue so that way you can be positioned uh, to just build that capital and saving it. And if you still work in your nine to five, which most of my small business clients were, um, you can do this when you're getting off in the evenings. And then you can do it on the weekends. This is something that is doable. You can do it so you can transition yourself to 
from a nine to five to a full-time business owner. Okay, so we have hit there so I can give the Q&A time uh, to get the questions answered and asked. And that was my recap for this. And that's all I have. Yes, because you know, I can talk. <laughs> Well done, Akisha. Excellent job. <laughs> okay, so yeah, we have time now for your questions that have not been answered. So please feel free to type them out again, um, because I know there were a lot of questions coming through during the walkthrough. So if there's anything you would like Akisha to go over again, or any questions you think she hasn't answered yet, now's your time to ask them in the chat box. Obviously, she did an excellent job. She is an expert in this area. And in her two years with the Apex Accelerator, she was helping clients um, with their searches and Sam.gov, email and marketplace and other places every day. So, yeah, is there anything that you would like Akisha to talk about regarding this topic? I, I might have answered them all, but I also before I go then, so let me make sure. So if I do see some pop up, okay, hold on. What about the cyber? Okay, because if I see some pop up, then I'll stop and answer it. So make sure you all connect on LinkedIn with Neil McDonald. He does those trainings every day, Monday through Friday on nothing but government contracting, building team and databases, I mean, he's built a phenomenal, I mean, phenomenal um, LinkedIn channel. So make sure you connect with Neil McDonald on LinkedIn. I think it's the Gov, um, the GovCon Chamber of Commerce. And he is, is free. I mean, he does a wonderful, it's on my last slide. So you'll see that on there too. I made sure I put that on there. Uh, also for my new small business, while we're waiting for everything, um, for emails, I mean, messages to come in. Um, also if you're new, go to the small business development center. Remember if you're brand, brand, brand new, you need some development training first, because if you come here, we are just going to give you this training and you need to get that development first, get that hands-on training, generate a little wealth and, um, then you're ready. Oh, let me make sure I ain't get no questions. Oh, remember, we cannot. So for the person who just said about the pinpoint micro purchases amount, remember, you cannot pinpoint micro purchase amount in SAM.gov. Now, you can possibly try in USA spending.gov to look at procurement opportunities, but they they're not tracking it like that. You know, anything under 25K. It doesn't have to be pulled. It doesn't have to be posted. That's the reason why that information is hard for us to find. But if it 25 and K and more, they're going to put it on the SAM.gov. So that's the reason why I told y'all, showed y'all a cheat sheet on how to just go look at the uh, actions they're posting. And, um, and that's on this sheet right here. Go look at it. Look at the agency and drill down. You're going to have to drill down in those contract award, you know, because you see they're making all these contract awards, right? So then you can go look through and see what actually are they, what next code did they use? All that is on there. And then you import it in that, um, in a pivot table, if you will. But for this, like I said, I had to keep it general because we're talking to many, you know, and then you have to customize it for your company by going to the videos and, and watching how to really uh, pull the data. But micro purchase, they're not telling us because if they told us, I think we all would be running after us. They don't have to post it. So they're not going to post it. You have to just identify stuff that, so being the person, so if you had HR, janitor services, you know approximately how much something should cost. And then you're looking for things that could sell as for micro purchase. So when you identify who the GPC car holder is, then you can possibly use that relationships. Hey, who is your government purchase card uh, rep person? And so I can get on their list or I can email them because if you start, don't over inundate them because they're not going to answer or they're going to spam you or they're going to block you or they're not going to allow you to send them emails. But you identify the source of sought notice that's how you get the introduction. That's how you get in to learn about those different um, 
those different opportunities because then they might say, hey, we got a GPC card holder. Um, we can purchase this with the GPC card, you see? But that's all happened because you had made relationships and then they told you about it. There's no way we can go find it yet. But if you, like I said, if you found it, please let me know and I'll train everybody how to use it because uh, micro purchases, they just don't post. They, they, they don't. Anything under 25K, they're not trying to put it on the um, there for you. Um, okay. okay, Keisha, a couple more questions. Where can I go to update my NACE codes? Um, in SAM.gov. You have to go in there and have a register. You have to be registered in SAM.gov. And then you'll hit the, um, you will go in your workspace and then you'll hit edit and edit your workspace. Because let me see right here. I think it's right here. You have to go in your work. Here it is, workspace and edit it because if I click it right now, it's going to go to my workspace and then put all my information up there. No, we want to, you have to go in your workspace, go in there and tell them you want to edit your records and then you want to add your NAICS codes or take away NAICS codes or add new NAICS codes and you can add your PSC codes. Okay, well, um, it looks like there are no more questions. Um, so I'd like to thank Akisha for this excellent, very in-depth tutorial. <laughs> Hopefully you can watch it back and um, share it with your team and uh, get better at finding these bid opportunities and saving searches. And of course, Akisha will be back next month to teach, I believe it's our proposal writing level one class. Yes, I'm pulling it now because I wanted to give, I was making sure I give an update to everyone on the next trainings, because I had created a slide for that too. And, and next month we have uh, introduction to proposal writing level one. Then September we have proposal writing level two. And then in October we have cost proposal development. So you see we did it in phases so that way you can walk through the entire process. And then now the contract administration, because you didn't want, look, we got we to gotta maintain this contract and keep it going. And then the December one is teaming and partnering. We got to come up with some strategies. We got to start networking with other small businesses. We got to start introducing ourselves and we can introduce ourselves in our sessions. We can put our name, like, you know, like Neil does. He loves for everyone to introduce themselves. Uh, what are your services? What do you do? And if are you looking to connect, meaning are you trying to team? Because this is where you build the relationships. This is where you start finding out who's doing what you're doing, finding other like-minded individuals that is trying to do the same thing you're doing. And then now let's connect. Because like I said, all of them ain't going to fit. Some team and partners, you be like, oh no, it's just like in relationship. Oh, I didn't, mm -mm, this was the wrong relationship. <laughs> and then others is going to be, oh my God, I've been... Where have you been? You know, I've been looking for a team and partner like such. So that's why it's important that we use this time as the learning time. So when you get out there, you hit the ground running. All right, y'all. That's it for me. Thank you, Akisha. And I will be sending the slides to you shortly. And the recording will be available in about an hour or two on our YouTube channel. And we have a lot of other recordings there as well. So you can spend all day watching those videos. Thank you all again for engaging with us and asking excellent questions, which, as Akisha mentioned earlier, we will incorporate into future trainings. Thank you again, everybody. Stay safe. And we hope to see you again at a future Apex Accelerator event. Bye bye.